Hi, in this tutorial we're going to take the skills that we learned in the last videos to create a simple electronics control box using SolidWorks sheet metal. So I've already created a sketch of a rectangle here. So I'm going to come over to sheet metal and I'm going to click here on my base flange forward slash tab and that's going to as expected create our uh, base flange so I'm gonna hit OK and so here we have our base flange made and at this point I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on this face it's the side of the sheet metal and if I begin a sketch on that face then I can create a sketch that begins at the corner right here and so if I drag it up I can drag it say to this point and then come over and then down and out and so I've really created a pretty basic sketch as I've said before on this face the edge or the rather the side of the sheet metal and so once that's created I'm going to show you a feature that we have not used yet and that's the miter flange feature so if you come over here click on miter flange um, it's going to generate a miter flange and so this complicated profile has been created uh, with the miter flange and I can click on this edge and it's going to do the same thing and actually miter the edge and I'm going to do this edge and this edge as well and the power of this tool is I could select multiple edges and it's going to create all of them and it's going to create a miter in all of the corners so I'm going to leave all the defaults that I have here uh, the way that they're set for now and I'm, and I'm going to hit OK and that's going to create our box actually uh, pretty easily and pretty simply and as you can see um, the corners are cut and they're cut down to the bottom plate and so of course I can come over to my features and I could click on miter flange and I can click on the material inside instead and that's going to alter it accordingly um, I can change it to material outside or I can make it um, bend outside which means that the bend is gonna uh, begin from that face so a couple different options here I can show it from the side so it's a little bit easier to see this is bend outside what you're seeing right here is the end of the base flange so if I click on um, the feature here for material outside it's going to move uh, to the outside face and then if I click again it's going to bring it all the way to the inside so I'm going to um, pretty much hit OK but first um, I can show you some edits you can do for the gap so here under gap distance if I bump up this value you see that the gap between the flanges gets larger and larger and I can go and make this value smaller if I want right now I'm at 12 millimeters but I can actually make this uh, one millimeter if I want as long as it's able to solve and there aren't any inconsistencies um, I can also create a custom bend allowance which is um, very important here uh, for the material to not um, you know rip apart or, or become destroyed and I can also click on trim side bends and that's going to trim the edge so if I hit OK you're going to see that it's uh, it's trimmed now so if I go back to the miter flange I can up the value again and I can make this let's say 10 millimeters um, of a gap and 
though it's not shown in this example, having the um, option here for your uh, side bends um, is very important to be sure that you're not creating a part that is going to rip when the material is actually stretched and created. And so one last thing um, to go over here is the start and end offset. So if I bump up the value um, for the distance, um, you're going to see uh, changes happening in the model. The uh, distance between where the um, part is actually started, so the, the distance from our first sketch is going to just become larger and larger. Sorry, let's, let's turn the gap to one just to keep it consistent. And so the offset here really only applies to the first sketch. So if I keep bumping this up, you're gonna see that it moves further and further away from the start. And if I bump up the um, offset distance, then the end of our miter flange is gonna change. So these two values really just apply to where our flange started and where our flange ended. So the bottom one is where it ended. You can see that here now that it's moving. And I can change the start one as well. So that being said, um, there's our box.